So this video is going to be on the topic of specific heat, which is basically how much heat will a substance absorb and how much will its temperature rise. So I want to use an example from the kitchen. Uh, if you put a pot of water on the stove and it's a small pot of water, it heats up quickly. If you put a large pot of water on the stove, it heats up more slowly. And so um, anyhow, so that, what that tells you is the the amount of mass of what you're trying to heat affects how much heat you need to apply. Uh, the other thing is the longer you heat on the stove, the hotter the water gets. And so uh, the amount of heat depends on the, the, how much you want to raise the temperature by. And then finally, uh, the type of substance it is um, determines how fast it heats up. So if you have a, a gallon of oil on a stove and a gallon of water on the stove, the water heats up much more slowly. And that's where the expression, watch pot never boils, is because water has a very high heat capacity. And so the equation that expresses all of these ideas is that the amount of heat, which we'll call by the letter small q, is equal to the mass, how much you're heating up, times a constant for that substance called the specific heat. So you're not expected to know any of these constants. Uh, one of them that might be real handy is the one for water since that's pretty much mostly what we wind up heating anyway. And uh, so for water, this constant is 4.184 joules per gram per degree C that we wish to raise the temperature. And so finally, the final thing is the rise in temperature. So by units analysis, if I multiply this constant by mass, grams will cancel. If I multiply by the change in temperature in centigrade, the degree C will cancel and the answer will be in joules, which is the unit of energy. And of course, heat is an energy unit. All right, so we're going to work a specific example. Uh, but we're going to do it backwards because what we're going to do is we're going to actually measure the heat and solve for the heat capacity of a different substance besides water. And one way you would measure heat is for example, to put something in water and see how much the water heats up, then you know that the amount of heat that went into the water was the same as amount as the heat that was lost by the metal. Or it could go the other direction. If it was a very cold piece of metal put in the water, then the metal will heat up and the water will cool down. You can measure that. Okay, so um, the problem we're going to do, if we have a, a 24.8 gram piece of metal, now we're going to guess what this metal is in a bit. Um, and the change in temperature goes from 20.2 degrees C up to 24.5 degrees C. Uh, this example is in one of the PowerPoint slides in the uh, notes in Canvas. Okay, and what else do we need? Ah, we need to know the amount of heat. So, so far we've been given the mass and the information to calculate change in temperature. So if we're going to solve for C, we need to know Q, and the heat applied was 275 joules. Okay, so uh, just plugging all these numbers in, and of course realizing that we can't use C equals 4.184 here. So the amount of heat, 275 joules, is equal to the mass, which is 24.8 grams. of the metal times the specific heat constant that we're looking for for this metal. It's not that number. Uh, it's going to be much smaller because remember water has a very high heat capacity. It warms up very slowly. Uh, and so now the change in temperature, not the temperature, change in temperature, change in temperature is 4.3 degrees C. All right, so now we just solve for C by dividing both sides by the 24.8 grams and the 4.3 degrees C. And so 275 joules divided by 24.8 grams and 4.3 degrees C. First of all, let's just look at the units where we're going to get. We're going to get joules divided by grams and degrees C, which is the units of specific heat. So we know we're good here. Now we just need to put in the numbers in our calculator. And if I have done this before this lecture correctly, it is 
And so this is actually rather high heat capacity for a metal. And so if you look in the table in the, the book, most of them are below one. So this turns out to be closest to beryllium. So this is a piece of beryllium metal. All right, that concludes the little lecture on specific heat. All right, one take. Better than Bill O'Reilly. <laughs>